In this video we're going to look at some different types of paint and different types of paintbrushes that are very commonly used in early childhood and elementary art activities. And I'm, I'm going to start with uh, temper paint because temper is a really good all-purpose paint. Um, this one is um, from Discount School Supplies Simply Washable Tempera. Tempera does come in washable and that's kind of nice um, if you're concerned about parents' concerns about uh, painty clothes, paint that won't come out of clothes, this is supposed to be uh, washable. This one is just, it doesn't say temper, it says washable paint, um, but it's really the same thing. It's te a temper paint, different brand, Gothic, um, and uh, probably a little less expensive, it's not washable. They both are marked with non-toxic symbols. Um, so we use these for many, many different things. Easel painting, typically with these, um, just standard like color mixing painting, we usually use these. So this stuff is not tempera. This is called BioColor. It's a special product that comes from Discount School Supplies. And in some ways you can use it like a tempera paint, although uh, it's more expensive so you might not want to. But in other ways it just doesn't work for certain kinds of mixing. Um, it, it definitely mixes colors differently and BioColor has some special formulations so it can do things like make a silly putty type of stuff out of it. So um, I'm going to link in the course page um, some links to the BioColor uh, activities page so you can see the different things they've developed to do with BioColor. And you might try it. It's a little more acrylic-y and rubbery than uh, your typical temper paint, um, but it has a similar consistency if you're just painting with it. All right. So BioColor. We'll look at it in a little bit. Um, of course, this is a glitter paint, and glitter paint can be fun. Um, I don't do a lot of activities with glitter paint, but it's certainly a nice extra. You can also put glitter on paint uh, after it's done. Um, so I'm just, of course, I would usually put this out in a container, but I'm just showing you some of this. This little gel-like, the texture, and obviously it's somewhat translucent, and you can certainly do an activity with multiple types, colors, sorry, of glitter paint, but that's kind of what it's going to look like. All right. So then this paint here, which looks similar, is um, an acrylic paint. This is uh, children's acrylic, and it's really important when you're looking at acrylics to make sure that it has the non-toxic symbol because there's many acrylic paints. Acrylics are a really common artist paint, so you'll find some things that are non-toxic and others that are not. Um, I don't use acrylic a lot uh, for children, but one cool thing about acrylic is that you can do something like this with it. So here's an example um, of jelly pr plate printing, and we'll do a little bit more of this when we do our printing section of the class, but this is a really popular activity right now. These are for sale in an art store. It's called a jelly plate. And um, you actually can make your own out of clear gelatin. Um, and again, when we get to the printing section, I will give you a recipe, I'll link you to a recipe for that. But basically a jelly plate is a printing plate and um, acrylics are what works on jelly because acrylics are, um, as you probably can tell by the name, they're a type of plastic, right? So um, they, they dry kind of um, rubbery and they, peel off so that's what makes them really good for this this jelly printing and cleaning up the jelly pr plate so let's give you an example of what we could do with a jelly print this is a really fun one you can add a lot of texture to it because the gel the the printing plate is really soft so here's an example of kind of adding some texture let me use the other side of this for a good texture and then when I print it under paper, I'll get some of that texture in it. So, rub it gently, pull it off, and you can see a little bit of the texture of the doily in there. And then, of course, you can also add colors here. Um, typically, when you're jelly plate printing, you're going to use a brayer to spread around the paint. Another really common thing we do with jelly plate printing is ooh, let me look at that. Uh, you can draw in it, add texture in this way. Um, okay. 
twisting a little bit too much, but there you go, there's jelly plate printing. Okay. So, next type of paint would be watercolor paint. And you've seen a few activities already with watercolor paint. Um, watercolor paint comes in a few different forms. You can get it in these liquid watercolors. We've used this a lot in our color videos. Um, to, to do like the coffee filter painting. Um, another way that um, watercolors can rise like this in these watercolor pans. Um, and here's two different versions. This one is Prang, which is a pretty uh, high-end uh, type of paint, brand of paint, but you know, it's still sold for children and it's not really expensive, but it makes a difference when you have a higher-end paint. So let's see if we can get a sample of these two and see if they're different. I actually don't know what brand this one is, so I can't say for sure if it's a good paint or not. Um, I have some nice brushes here. We're going to talk about brushes in a second, but there are a lot of different brushes that are sold um, for watercolors. These are just sort of the cheap one that comes in a pack or comes in with the watercolors, but you know, you can also use some nicer and thicker brushes that children might enjoy. This is a lot softer brush. So let's see what we get with a couple of these different ones. All right, so this one, you can see very, very light colors, right? And that. And notice how I'm using this little glass jar. It's kind of like a baby food jar, but it actually was a yogurt brand that used to have these. Um, I love these for uh, children seeing the color in paint. All right, so see how that's a lot stronger color? Let's do the black just for comparison here. Yeah, so you're getting a stronger, darker color than you did with that one there. Right. And then if you use liquid watercolor, you get even a stronger color. But the nice thing about these is that children get to make a lot of decisions and also they get to enjoy that process of mixing in the water to get uh, more and more paint on their brush. Let's look at some different paint brushes. So I just showed you a couple of different paint brushes for watercolors. Actually I'm going to keep this for right now. Um, <clears throat> there are lots of paint brushes that are sold uh, for artists and for children and I tend to get some of, of both kinds. And so this is just a standard kids paintbrush right here. Um, you can get these in multi-packs in school supply stores. Um, this is a nicer kind of artist paintbrush, so if these are on sale, I'll often get these to have. Uh, this is another standard kid paintbrush. Um, nice long handle. These are great for uh, painting at the easel. And notice, you know, you can get them in different thicknesses. This is a little bit nicer version of that. Um, Paintbrushes are made of different types of hair usually, and this is a pretty rough, it might even just be um, synthetic or maybe a horse hair, um, whereas you can get squirrel hair brushes if you really want those. All right, um, a couple more brushes. This is actually a glue brush if you've seen these before. They're very rough and they're, they're good for glue but terrible for paint. And then I have a few different specialty brushes here also. So. Um, some specialty brushes are sold just to be easier to hold. So this one has a big end, which is good for that um, that grass, the fist grass that much younger children have. Sometimes we also use these bigger, like real uh, house painting brushes for younger children or even for older children just to get a different line. Um, and then of course there's also these sponge brushes. And um, <clears throat> these were made particularly for children to paint with. This is more of the type you might get in a hardware store probably cheaper <clears throat> and then I have a few sort of funny uh, specialty brushes here um, this is just for painting multiple lines obviously this came from I don't know probably discount school supplies and then these actually were uh, created by Bev Boss and they're made for easel painting or painting on the wall and you can see that you can do some different angles with those here's another version of that one so children can try to figure out, manipulate the mechanics of how to do that. This is also another Bev Bosch brush, so obviously this makes a really different line on the paper. 
just a lot of kind of spatter painting and these are just pieces of rubber that have been taped onto this brush uh, so you could make your own of this. And then I think the last brush, well, I have a couple more things to show you. This is an example of a brush that's been modified for grip. This is specifically for a child um, who has um, motor impairments who might need a bigger thing to grab onto. So this is just a sponge that was taped on here to make that a little bit easier to grab. Um, I also have uh, some other things one could use for painting with. This is a dauber that you might get if you were doing uh, stenciling, but kids like to use this for printing or just for moving paint around differently. The similar thing that was just made with a sponge clipped on a, a clothespin here. And then I also do like using these sometimes. These are little makeup applicators and I got these just in a, a multi-pack. And then you can use these like for watercolor painting, just again for a kind of a different line here. Again, where people can see it. Yeah. Um, we're also going to look at using uh, feather duster paints in, a, in another video. Here's another uh, version of feather painting. And then the last things I have are some uh, chenille sticks or pipe cleaners. These also can be interesting for painting, getting a little bit different line. And then squeegees. Squeegees are really good for really thick paint um, and we use them for shaving cream sometimes.